Well, hello, and welcome to part two of Mainland Peated Scotch Week. Because uh, it's getting a little chilly here in Chicago, and it's the kind of weather where I, I just want peat in my life, but I also don't want to just talk about Isla. So what are we doing today? Uh, oh, 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 uh, before I mention that, uh, I will mention, uh, thanks to you maniacs giving me some positive response in previous videos, I have started working on a book. Uh, there's a plan kind of sketched out. There's a few words down already. Um, I don't really know what I'm doing though. So <laughs> I don't know, am I gonna self-publish? Am I gonna try to chase down a publisher? Am I gonna, you know, uh, try to get a little piece published in advance to get people excited and to even see if there's actually genuine solid interest in such a thing. But uh, yeah, there there is a project going. So um, thank you. And if you have any advice, please let me know. I have an email address now. And of course, you can always leave a comment. All right, uh, mainland peated scotch. What are we doing today? Uh, we're going back to two old favorites of the genre. I've got a Glen Turret here, and I've got a Ben Nevis here. Both of these uh, distilleries make very good, very interesting peated scotches. This uh, Glen Turret, what do they call this? Uh, the the Ruad Muaro um, is from Cooper's Choice with the gigantic box they always offer. And this Ben Nevis, which is quite young, is from the Signatory 100 Proof collection. This is number 17. And uh, let's get this board. So, um, peated versions of these distilleries have been on the channel before. What else are we doing? Are we going to do some Ben Riach? Uh, I think peated Ben Riach could be really good, especially when it gets old. Peated Ben Riach can be very, very good. Um, but no. Um, Peated Kilcarran, maybe? You know, honestly, I don't know if I want to throw more hype onto the fire there. Um, there's plenty of options out there, but what I wanted to go with this time around is... Da -da -da -da, a distillery that uh, has been around making peated malt forever and that you've totally forgotten about. Old Ballantruan, 10-year-old. Uh, this is peated tum and towel. So it's a... Uh, very, it's an interesting distillery in that it's so frequently uninteresting, but they have, oh, for a long time now, I think for at least a couple of decades, have been making a peated version. And uh, I haven't tried it in years, but there's a 10 year old version and it's not too expensive. So we're gonna try that out. And also, uh, speaking of hype, long row, we're gonna do the basic Long Row Campbelltown Peated Single Malt Scotch Whiskey. And that's what we're going to start with. So we're just going up in order of proof here. All right, starting out with the Long Row. These are kind of not really spaced out correctly. Uh, so this is batch 23-176, the uh, so bottled 2023. Um, now, Long Row is, of course, Peated Spring Bank, and it's also... Uh, only double distilled as opposed to partial triple distillation. And um, I mean, the reason I want to review this is mainly because it's, it's one of the few Springbank bottles out there, or bottles from Springbank Distillery, I should say, that is kind of available. Like you can, you might have to scrounge a little bit, but you should be able to find this. Um, it just doesn't get the interest that... Uh, regular old spring bank or even like that some of the peated kilcarens have been have been getting recently but this is kind of around um so let's see what we got uh non-chill filtered um natural color 46 percent here we go uh hairy is the first word that comes to mind with with this, um, so it's not actually that young. It's it's maybe, I think the minimum is, is six or seven years old, on the uh, the basic long row. But yeah, it it it's it's so elemental. 
I mean, Lone Roar's funny because, I mean, if you give it some time, it just becomes this unbelievably layered, complex kind of malt. You have to watch out for the sherry cask and also the red wine cask. You know, be, be wary, do your homework. Um, but like old long rows, good old long rows are some of the best spring banks I've ever had. Um, but they, they do seem to need that extra time, which is kind of the reverse of most peated malts. Like most of the time, the unpeated version needs more time to kind of come around and get get good than the peated versions. And with long row, I mean, with Springbank, it's almost the reverse. I think Hazelburn might be the the, the best early shower of the the, uh, the Springbank malts. Anyways, long long row needs time to kind of figure itself out, and this one has not had that much time. It's very. Um, yeah, elemental, I guess is the word. Austere. There's peat here, but there's not, there's not, there's less than the numbers would indicate. I think this is like, what, close to 40 ppm, but it doesn't show like that. You're getting like, I mean, there's some flowers here for one thing, like violets. Like it's, there's, there's something in here that reminds me of like very floral red wines, like, like Beaujolais or something like an old fireplace, dust, like not campfire. This smells like a fireplace. <sighs> like a, uh, some kind of grain chocolate, like a, like an espresso chocolate, something like that. With little chunks of coffee still in there. And what the hell is that? This is gonna sound not nice, but spoiled cooking oils. Um, you know, you've, you've just let, let the, the vegetable oil sit on the counter for a few years too long. Yeah. Or even like a hot pan, like you go over to your, your friend's house and they're trying to explain to you how healthy extra virgin olive oil is and they're just pouring it in the pan and you're, you're trying to explain. You start trying to explain smoke points to them, but you just, you, you know they're not going to listen, so you stop. It's that smell. It's like, like spoiled vegetable oil in a hot pan kind of smoking away um heather uh but like dead heather there's, there's some sea elements to this there's a little blast of sea breeze something like herbaceous like almost a touch of fernet bronca in here Like rusty graininess, not not oatmeal. Like congee? Like um yeah, really grainy congee, I guess. White pepper. Kind of some mixed tea leaves. And a little bit of that kind of trademark spring bank green nuts thing, like unroasted nuts. Yeah, lots of little things. Very, you could spend a long time picking this apart. But it's certainly like austere. This is, this is a whiskey for the brain, not for, you know, don't break this out for people who don't know what they're getting into. On the palate. On the palate, it's a little bit more straightforwardly peat monstery. Um, so you're getting, you know, peat, campfire twigs, vanilla fudge. I would guess this is a majority bourbon cask. I haven't checked. Some tea, like some stewed Ceylon tea or something. But then there's like a lot of flowers and kind of like a 60s perfume thing. Oysters, raw oysters, um, and a mustard, like a, like a mustard seed thing, which is more of a Lecheg Tobermory thing than a, than a long row thing for me. But I, you know, they're not that far away from each other. Um, something nutty. Almost like a P 
peanutty masaman curry or something like Thai curry. Um, Congre Congi again. Black pepper. The Fernet Branca thing, that herbaceous kind of... Uh, it's the, that alpine herbaceousness thing again. A little more kind of burned vegetable oils. Um... So long row is never boring. It just isn't. Like it's always gonna kind of get your brain going as you when you put it in a glass. Uh, but it's also always a little bit of a challenge. And this is certainly this is certainly a challenge. Um, it's rough is the wrong word. It's austere. It's a bit brutal. Um, but the quality is certainly there, and you can tell. It just to get to the ceiling of what, what this could be, it would just need more time. Um, but I, I, it's certainly good. Um, and hey, it's available spring bank. So let's give this a squirt of water and we shall move on to peated uh, Tomantol. Old Balanchruin, 10 year old. The peated malt, space like Glenlivet, single malt Scotch whiskey. This is not expensive. This is maybe uh 55 60 euros somewhere so it's bottled at 50 percent and it's bottled uh unchill filtered nothing in here about uh natural color but you will notice the color is pretty light which is usually a good sign um i've had you know the regular non-agitated uh valentru in like 10 years ago the old um Toman tool with the pd tang which used to be the cheapest peated whiskey you could get and wasn't my favorite. But uh, it was, you know, it's this is out there. It's not expensive. It's an official bottling. It's got an age statement. Um, seems like it's worth a shot. Let's see what we got. Interesting. So um, first impression, this is a lot more, uh, this is a lot more Isla than the long row is. Yeah, this one I'm definitely getting like, like you hand this to me and tell me it's from Southeast Isla, I'm probably not gonna question you too much. So peat, she seashells. There's even a little like iodine thing. There's like a medical dumpster not too far away. Um, but nice. <laughs> Vanilla, but th but what what what's sort of sticking out is is like the floral thing. That might give away that something is off. Uh, wild flowers, lots of them. There's, there's a little bit of like um like a baked fruit in here, like a, like a, a baked green apples thing. Oatmeal. Coffee with like a maybe some vanilla creamer in there. Dark chocolate creme brulee. <sighs> Little the more t okay. The more time I spend swirling this, the more I start to get a little. It's not quite a barnyard note. It's more like a um like a muddy note. Like a being out in the woods, uh, you know with. Right, you know, two days after it rained, there's still some kind of gross mucky parts. There's a little bit of that going on. And like a dollop of raw honey, of all things. I gotta be honest, I kind of bought this on a whim, and it's, even on the nose already, it's, it's showing me a few things. On the palate. This is a fun contrast with the long row in some ways because it 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 despite this being a, a space side peated whiskey, which means it should just be weird up all over the place. This is surprisingly conventional as far as like peated whiskeys go. It but, but it works. I mean, it's a very good example of the breed. Uh, 
And it's also just like super duper oily on the palette. Damn. Sometimes when they put, you know, Unshield filtered on a bottle, like it doesn't really that make that much of a difference. Here you can just feel the, the oils just coating everything. Um, flavors, I mean, again, it's a lot of conventional stuff with some fun weirdness playing around in the margins. Um, again, peat, seashells, iodine, medical stuff, um, oatmeal, coffee, vanilla, dark chocolate. But then like, yeah, apple slices, honey. There's that there's little hints to remind you, hey, I'm, you know, I'm from the land of of maltiness and grassiness and flowers and stuff. Uh um wildflowers, kind of like a twiggy campfire ash thing coming through now along with the peat. A little candied orange. Lots of black pepper. And yeah, it was, it's really the mouth presence that's impressing me on this. It's, well, it's a lot of things. I mean, it's a good balance of just, you know, fastball straight down the middle uh, kinds of Isla Peter flavors with a little bit of color. Uh, combined with that mouthfeel is really, it, it, this really works well, actually. I was, I am delighted and surprised by how uh, composed this is. At least given my history with, you know, Tum and Tool and Peter Tum and Tool and Ballantru and more generally. So let's give this some squirts. We'll come back to it. Two should be enough for 50, right? I could play around with it, but let's, let's leave it there. All right, moving on to... What should be the heavy the heavy hitter of the of the the group? Cooper's Choice 2010. Uh, this is awkward to reach through. Glen Turret. Ruad Maur. Uh, heavily peated. Let's see. This is cast number 177. Ten years old. 366 bottles. 56 percent alcohol. It's a bourbon cask. Uh, any other inspiration? Non chill filter. Natural color again. And uh, yeah, this is actually bottle number one of those th 336 bottles. Interesting. Uh, so what have we got? We have the, what well, looks like the lightest color here. And, uh, all, none of these are super, super dark, but this is probably the lightest of the bunch. Now, I've had lots of really stonking good peated glen turrets in the past, so I'm expecting a lot from this. Yeah, okay. So I, I know like these two, the the Ballantru and the, the Long Row were already totally different from one another. This is even more, this is even different from those two. Totally different. Um, let me get my, see if I can wrap my head around this. Uh, lots of oranginess, bergamot, but also like like orange candy. Mixed flowers, almost like a something. There's a fi a fire thing, but it's not really peat. I mean, yeah, there's peat, but it's it's more like almost like burning compost, like burning organic trash. But but kind of nice, not totally nice. Yeah, peat, but not that much. Um, and this, this 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 is um this is a character. Gummy worms, um, lemon peel, shortbread cookies, um, more ash. It's just very like, it's very fruity and, but at the same time rotting and burning and on fire. Puer tea, uh, that mustard seed thing, that's in here again. 
Again, it's more of a Tobermory note from in, in my brain, but here it is. Uh, <laughs> this, this is, yeah. The, the note came into my head and I'm going to say it like fermenting potatoes, like for like potatoes that have been sitting around, sitting out for, for like a month and change and they're starting to grow tendrils. It's that smell. Sage, dill. Not a lot of cask influence here. Not uh, Maybe a kiss of vanilla. Just a little, just a little nod towards vanilla, but very slight. We're very close to the to the new make on this, which is normally I wouldn't complain, but yeah, I, I I was saying that the long row was a little brutal and austere. This is <laughs> this is even more difficult, uh, at least on the nose, on the palate. Lord, what do I do with this? Um, very new Mickey. Uh, I it's it's ten years in the cast, but I don't think the cask has been doing all that much. I don't think the mat, the t the time the oxygen exchange has been doing all that much either. It, it's also like weirdly short in the mouth. Like uh, there's a lot happening, and I'm going to try to dig into it, but it's all happening right up front. Finish is holds on pretty well, and the the but it just there's nothing past the molars really. Lots of orange again, and ash, and just weird things. Um, orange peel, bergamot, ash. Flowers again. That seems to be a running theme here. Uh, dead grass. Um, there's a little bit more cask on this, like some vanilla ice cream thrown in here. Like just a, you're gonna plop a scoop of vanilla in a bunch of ashy, orangey stuff, like ashtray, just straight up ashtray. Um, fermenting potatoes and compost again. Some of it, some of which is on fire. Gummy worms, burned gummy worms, porridge, puer, little hints of lapsang as well, lapsang souchon. The mustard thing, a little bit of a, uh, uh, what is that? Like a manzanilla sherry kind of character. Uh, toasted herbs. Yeah, this is this is tough. Um, not to say there's no pleasure to be found here, but I mean, take what I was my my modest complaints about the long grow and court, sort of amplify them. This is whiskey for the brain. This is whiskey for sharing with intellectual whiskey enjoying friends, and not necessarily for you know just pouring for yourself on a hard Friday afternoon. Um, in some ways, it. <laughs> It reminds me of the old days of Glen Turret because Glen Turret for a long time had a very poor reputation, but it wasn't because it was like, uh, because it had no character, right? It wasn't because it was boring. It was because it, it, it was just a little bit hard to take. Um, let's go four squirts to start with. Good Lord. Um, so it has a little bit of that kind of like throwback, old school, just like whiskey for the hardened kind of character. We're back in that stage. Okay, <laughs> I'm going to come back to that. But first, uh, last in our lineup, the a Ben Nevis 2019 from Signatory, part of their, again, part of their 100 proof edition. Heavily peated, five years old in uh, refill Oloroso Sherry Butts. Until filtered, no added color, 57.1%, which is 100 British proof. Uh, 
All right, let's see what we got here. Um, and once again, it's it's different from all the others. Um, and again, the, the peat is much more modest than the, the numbers of the peating level would probably indicate. Actually, if anything, the ball and truant comes off as the peatiest of the bunch, like in terms of how it shows. So what am I getting on the nose? I'm getting like, um, you know, it feels like I'm eating a baked apple and pear tart next to like a campfire with a lot of like normal twigs and wood and stuff and that someone has just thrown a peat block on there. That's kind of, the, so it's like mingling campfire and peat fire with like fruity pastry notes. Ah, but no, the, the sherry is in there too. So I'm, I'm getting a little bit of chocolate orange and a little bit of like uh, Swisher Sweets. Black pepper, a little bit of like um, beef, uh, better than bullion. You know, the little stuff you scoop out of the jar to mix with water to make, you know, homemade bullion. A little bit of vanilla fudge happening. I wouldn't be surprised if the, the casks were actually American oak originally before they, the sherry was introduced. Because there's, there, yeah, there's a fair amount of like vanilla coming off out of this. Little touches of like oatmeal. Something ashy, like it smells a little bit like a burning car. <laughs> that sounds funny, but. Yeah, like like an like an old car, like a '70s gigantic American sedan that's been lit on fire, like burning metal. Just some straight up like uh, single malt Scotch barley citrus kinds of notes. I mean, ultimately, it's pretty simple. It's it's you know, you got your peat, you got your and, and your ashiness, you've got some, a little bit of, of uh, Ben Nevisy uh, explosive fruitiness happening, and then you've got your, your sherry cask, and that's most of what's going on on the palate. I mean, it's young and it's simple, but it works. I mean, it's, the mouth presence is pretty gosh darn good. It's actually getting further back in my mouth than the 10 year old um, Glen, Glen Turret was. It doesn't hang on too super long. The mouth feel is not, it's certainly nowhere near where the Bell and Truman was, um, but it's very, very pleasant. I mean, if you, if you just wanted to have a nice, easy drinking, high proof peat and malt, for the fall, this would this would do the job. Um, once again, uh, peat, campfire, confectioner's fudge, so vanilla fudge, black pepper, tea, but it's like a mix of, it's like Russian caravan tea, chocolate orange, Swisher sweets, that kind of, sh you know, Classic sherry cast stuff. That kind of apple tart character is still there. Plus like a, maybe like a squirt of lemon on top for fun. Kind of a grainy porridge thing as well. I mean, yeah, uh, I don't know what else to say about this. It's, you look at the label and you see it's a young, peated Highland whiskey aged in sherry casks. And that's kind of how it presents. I mean, it does what it says in the label. Like that's, that's really, it's exactly what you think it is. Um, and that's not bad, but it's exactly what you think it is. It's not gonna step up and surprise you in any way. Hmm. Very yummy. We'll give this a couple squirts. Two, three, four, 
I'll go to five on this. Should I do six? No, no, I'm, I'm going to keep it. All right, let's go back through. How's your week going? Um, well, I hope. Okay, let's go back through these. Back to the long row. Now with some water. Oh, hello, bee. A bee just landed on my bottle of Ben Nevis. The bees have been particularly um, assertive <laughs> this, this summer, going into this fall. Um, all right, on the nose, the long row. I mean, it, okay, so now the, um, the water's bringing out a little bit more of a citrus character. A little bit of lemon juice happening. But lots of the same kinds of stuff, that, that kind of floral note, the, 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 the hot oils. A lot of that's still there. I mean, I mean, this is frankly pretty easy going after the Glen Turret. Uh, it's, st it's still austere. Yeah, there's, there's more like heather and rocks coming through. Definitely more lemon. A little more flowers. Yeah, this is going to sound funny. It smells like a peated Chablis. Um, one of my favorite white wines, so I'm not going to complain about that. Yeah, on the palate. On the palate, not a whole lot of change. It gets a little bit more ashy and a little bit more perfumey. Mouth presence is okay. It's kind of middle of the road. It's uh, the length is fine. The mouth feels fine. The finish is fine. Um, yeah, elemental is still the word for this. Tricky to score, and I'm guessing this isn't going to be the, tr the only one that, in this lineup that's tricky to score. I would call this an 86, but be aware of what you're getting into. Like, this is this is one that's going to challenge you a little bit. Um, it just, in terms of the score, I mean, it's a decent enough score, but with more time, this would be well into the high 80s, maybe the 90s. You can feel the potential. You can feel the complexity just kind of beginning to figure itself out and put it itself into order. It's just not quite there yet for this bottling. So yeah, 86 points. Moving on to the old Ballantruin 10. Truth be told, this is the, this one might've been my favorite going to the second round, um, which is a little worrying considering the, um, general lack of esteem in which I tend to hold this distillery. Sorry, Tom Montool. I'm sure you're very nice people, but uh, yeah, sorry. Anyways, let's see what we got. Let's see if it can carry things through. Whoa. So with water, uh, this gets like super muddy and like not barn, barnyard is the wrong word, but like almost space side funky. There's almost like a beery element to this now, like um, like a Vienna lager kind of thing. Some flowers creeping through. I mean that more Isla style peat is is and the the vanilla is still there, but a lot of that fun, weird stuff that was happening in the background has really started to show its head with water, and I'm kind of into it. Okay, so my main complaint about this in the first round was that it was maybe a little bit too conventional, and now I think I have to hang that complaint up. That's fun. Very weird, very interesting. Um, on the palette...
dang, that mouth feels really just, it's so creamy. Um, I don't know why that's happening, but it, it is. This is, this has by far the best mouth feel of the, of the flight. Um, in terms of flavors, it has that same kind of, like, just, just turn towards like mud and a little bit of barnyard and a, a, a hint of beeriness, more more like porter this time than than Vienna Lager, but but still um, heather as well. But it makes that turn while keeping that core of intense peat, of vanilla, of like just deliciousness and cr and like peaty, desserty crushability. Hell yeah, good, like this, this might be the best Tom and Tool I've ever had. Um, I was not, I was not expecting this to be both I wasn't expecting this to be good, and I also wasn't expecting this to be so kind of distinctive. This is kind of showing me some moves, y'all. I'm not going to score this in the stratosphere. I would only still only give this like an 87. I still want a little bit more mouth presence, a little bit more... Uh, intensity complexity just just a little bit more from this but um for the price point and and just like for doing something different i mean this is absolutely worth it worth your your attention um very good showing from tom and tool uh keep keep doing this guys like this is do more like this please uh yeah 87 points very good Oh God, here we go, we are back at the Glen Turret. And if memory serves me right from my memories of like fighting my way through bottles of Glen Turret years ago, this should be more porgy now that I've added uh, more water. Let's see what we got. It's so raw, it's so weird. Yeah, it's it's gummy bears and oranges on fire. Like that's, and and there's also like some some like fermenting old porridge on fire in there too. I, I, it's so weird. Like yeah, and this is this is the old days of Glen Turret when people just avoided it because it just didn't have. Like, it was just too hard. It was just too much work. It was just too unbalanced. I mean, it's difficult. It's not bad. I, I feel like I'm, I'm talking trash about this. But I'm talking trash about this relative to where... I was expecting this to win the flight. And I don't think it's going to win the flight. Um, but it's not bad. It's difficult. But it's not bad. On the palate... Mm. I was complaining about the mouth presence, especially the length. With water, the mouth presence improves considerably. And a little bit more cask, a little bit more kind of vanilla ice cream, vanilla latte kinds of stuff coming out. It's still a brute. It's still a beast. Uh, like peated old potatoes. That orangey, gummy, wormy thing. Tar, toasted lemon. Like uh, oatmeal mixed with cigar ash. Like just, just difficult. Masochistic whiskey. Like this is this is hard stuff. And accordingly, very hard to score. Even harder to score than the, the long row. Um, 
I could see I could see a lot of people th scoring this into the 70s. It's just there's not a lot of balance. Even when you add water, which improves matters considerably, there's not a lot of balance to this. Um, I'm going to be more charitable. I'm going to I'm going to give this sort of the high end of where I think this could land. I'm going to call this an 83 plus. I mean, someone who likes weird whiskeys could probably score this higher still. Uh, yeah, I'm, 83 plus feels feels right to me. No, 83 plus question mark. I'm going to throw the question mark on there because this is weird and I don't trust my own taste on this. Um, very fun. Definitely want to share with friends who just to blow their minds a little bit, but tr tough. It's tough. Um, let's move on. Back to the Ben Nevis. Five-year-old now with a little bit of water on the nose. Yeah, simple is the word. Um, but simple doesn't mean bad. Like, uh, go <laughs> go study theology for a while. Simple does not mean bad. Um, yeah, I mean, it's peat, and it's, if anything, like the, the, the Ben Nevisy part has kind of receded a little bit. So now you're really getting, like, peat and kind of sherry cask, but it's not like, like dirty sherry cask. We we're talking like very clean, safe, sanitized sherry, sherry cask. No, eh, there's still some graininess creeping through there. Still some porridge. It's nice. I mean, it, it, no real development on the nose, which you wouldn't expect on a whiskey this young anyway, really. Who cares? Um, it smells nice. On the palate. A little bit more, more tobacco now, like some stoved black Cavendish or something. Again, it's really mostly exactly what you think it would be. It's young peated Highland whiskey in a sherry cask. Like that's that's what this tastes like. Water brings out a little bit more pepper and a little bit more of like a dried fruit figgy kind of sweetness. And it pushes back the Ben Nevisy, uh, multi fruity, orangey stuff a little bit. Um, it's nice. That's that's most of what I would say about this. This is a very nice whiskey. It's very delicious. The peat and the sherry are getting along well together. I have no complaints. 85 points. Uh, which is to say it's good. It's it's very good. It's perfectly good. But it's not winning the flight. What is winning the flight, to my surprise and shock, is the uh, old Ballantruan, 10-year-old. Um, 87 points for this. It's, it's delicious and complex and... It's both a very, very safe, conventional PD play, and it's a little bit adventurous because when, when you add water, it really changes into a different kind of beast. Um, just kind of a great showing from a distillery I don't think about that much. And yeah, I'm sort of impressed. Um, second place, Long Row. Very good, very much a thinker, needs time. Um, 86 points. And then the Ben Nevis... 2019, Sherry Petey Ben, Petey ben Nevis, uh, 85 points. It's exactly what you think it is. And then the, uh, the kind of the shock, the other shock of the group beyond the Palantruan, the uh, the Cooper's Choice Glen I, It's difficult. It's hard. Um, there's definitely character here, but it's you're going to have to fight with it. 
83 plus question mark and that's the lineup thanks for watching and uh and cheers enjoy your fall